Hello and welcome again to my latest presentation. Uh, this time, very exciting one, we're looking at uh, MIDI mapping and MIDI in general because we've expanded the capabilities of new rack. So the first thing I want to bring your attention to is the fact that we've added two extra categories of effect. So as you go to add a category, you should notice now we've got a routing and a MIDI category. Now, if we take a look at routing, you'll notice some of the items in here are familiar. And that's because we've split up the other category and moved some of those items across to routing because they are specifically to do with routing uh, cabling, basically. Um, and we've added this MIDI option, which I'm going to go through all of these items in here uh, at a later stage in this video. Now previously we've been able to add MIDI instruments to the rack in order to produce carriers for TalkBox and Vocoder. But if you take a look at now, we now have a MIDI output. And we can actually add MIDI effects now to new rack. And the MIDI flows from left to right, just like audio. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to insert one of the new MIDI modules called MIDI Harmony into the rack. Now I'm going to change the pitch to seven semitones and change the scale and key to be uh, uh, C major. And as you can hear here, uh, we're now playing sevenths. And the real nice thing now is I can add something like a reverb to the end and we can process both uh, audio and MIDI at the same time in the same rack. So essentially in AUM I've got MIDI input uh, coming into new rack and then being uh, redirected to Quanta. And just to demonstrate MIDI flowing through the rack, I've now got uh, a harmony connected to a synth module and then that being processed by a digital delay at the end. So if we take a little listen to that. And without the harmony. Okay, and now just to take it one step further, we're gonna have a look at the MIDI randomizer, which is also a new tool in this version. We're going to set the key and scale to the same as the harmonizer and it will start when we press the transport button. So let's just speed that up a little bit. And again, the important thing to note here is the MIDI is traveling from left to right through the rack and then will appear at the uh, new rack MIDI out. So it could then be passed on to something else for further processing. Now another little tool that I've added to this version is something called a MIDI monitor, which is very useful for debugging the MIDI mapping, which I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Uh, but if you, uh, if you add uh, one of these monitor modules to the end of the rack, you can see exactly what's going through it. Currently it's just note and note offs, but uh, it, it's very useful for debugging. Okay, so now we, we can process MIDI data. It stands to reason that we can actually load new rack as a MIDI processor. And uh, I'm going to use that to demonstrate uh, uh, MIDI mapping. Uh, it's probably the easiest way to, for you to visualize what's going on. Now just be aware here that the, this version of new rack here is taking its MIDI input from the MIDI processing version which currently is empty, the rack is empty. But if we uh, open this, we can open yet another new module called MIDI Mixer, which was designed purely for uh, automation purposes. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna control the uh, insert effect, which is uh, currently got um, a rack loaded um, with these knobs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna send MIDI CC messages from the MIDI processing version of new rack to control this effect. Now, most people know this gate effect. It makes quite a nice sound. But it might be that you want to adjust something like the mix or the smooth knob on the fly. Now, in previous versions, you could have used AUM's mapping, but it's not necessarily the best way of doing things. Um, so what you can now do is if we go into Interface Builder and go into Edit Mode of Interface Builder, when you click on a, an item within this screen, um, the tools palette will appear. So if I click on the mix knob, we get the tools palette for the mix knob. And if we click on options and select MIDI mapping, we get this new screen here. 
Now we've got three choices here. We can map to MIDI notes, uh, CC numbers or program changes. Now if we take a look at this uh, um, MIDI mixer up here, I'm going to try and map the knob, the pan knob of channel 1 to the mix knob. Um, now the first, just make sure that you've got your routing set up right and that you take an input from this MIDI processing unit. Now if I come back and hit MIDI learn and then come back to the um, mixer and twist the pan knob, you'll see it's automatically assigned. And I have to hit the save button, remember to hit the save button. Now whenever we turn the MIDI pan knob, you should see the um, corresponding mix knob turn. So now let's try and map the smooth knob to the uh, fader, uh, the channel 1 fader. And you can see it's as easy as pressing the learn button, moving the fader and then pressing save. We can even go as far as to map the little power button at the top here to the power button within the rack in exactly the same way. Now I must stress the MIDI learn operation does not hit the save button for you, so remember to do that. But as you can see it works fine. Now if we look at another example where we try to map the power button to something like a note on the keyboard, um, remembering to change the input. <laughs> um, as I press a MIDI note, uh, you'll see that it will toggle the power button on when I press the MIDI note and it will go off when I release the MIDI note. And to get around that you need to enable the toggle option and uh, save your settings and that should resolve the problem and it should just toggle the power button on and off with that MIDI note. And the great thing about that is you can actually during your performance hit MIDI notes to turn effects on and off. Now how great is that for live performance? Especially when you're using something like the Leslie simulator we can map the fast slow and stop keys to particular keys on the keyboard. So hopefully that opens up a whole world of possibilities for people out there and they can uh, more easily do some of the things they've been wanting to do. Now I know at this point everyone's mind is in overdrive thinking what possibilities are there now and I've just got to realise those in future updates. So that's about it for this video. Look out for these exciting new features in the next version coming soon.